bulldogs are modified wolves. In order to change the wolf skull into that of a bulldog, the ancestors of bulldogs shorten their skull, especially the upper jaw, with the lower jaw projecting further than the upper jaw. The ancestors of Great Danes not only had evolved a great size, being larger than their ancestors, the wolves, but also modified the shape of their skull, elevating the height of the cranium. French Terriers are modified wolves. As the ancestors of French Terriers evolved, they greatly shortened their skulls, especially shortening the length of the snout. As ancestral dogs evolved into English Terriers, the brain case rotated downwards and the thickness of the snout increased so that the height of uh, the upper jaw was increased. Chihuahuas are modified wolves. Skulls of ancestral wolves were modified to become those of ancestral dogs, which were further shortened, uh, producing a narrow face and a rounded skull uh, typical of chihuahuas. Obviously, chihuahuas also greatly reduced their size. While the largest wolves can stand three feet tall at the shoulder and weigh up to 175 pounds, the uh, smallest chihuahuas can stand four to five inches at the shoulder and weigh slightly more than a pound. In the past several tens of thousands of years, wolves were domesticated to produce the various uh, breeds of domestic dog alive today. But over much larger periods of time, hundreds of thousands of years, millions of years, the wild ancestors of dogs evolved a number of lineages. Note that the difference between wolves and coyotes, the first video segment, wolves and red foxes, the second video segment, or wolves and gray foxes, the third segment, are not as significant as some of the uh, differences between uh, wolves and some of the dog breeds. The variation to produce the skulls of diverse wild dog species is often less than that which is observed within the single domestic dog species. As bears evolved from the ancestral bears, differences developed in the diverse lineages. So for example, compare a black bear skull to a grizzly bear skull. Notice that there's a difference in the height of the skull and the rotation of the brain case and snout. Or notice the difference between a black bear skull and a cave bear skull, how much taller the cave bear skull sits and how much higher the brain case is above the snout. This is even more dramatic when the uh, size of the cave bear skull is taken into account. In the first a video between black bears and cave bears, the sizes were kept uh, constant. Uh, here, the actual size is taken into account and one can see the great size difference. In this video, the skull of a gray wolf is transformed into the skull of a black bear. Now, wolves and bears are closely related, and you can see that there are not enormous differences. The changes that would be needed to transform a wolf skull into a bear skull are rather small. Compare that to the changes needed to convert a wolf skull to that of many breeds of dog, or that of, a, say, a black bear to that of a cave bear. Many feel that the differences between a wolf and black bear skull are less than those between wolves and some breeds of dog or black bears and cave bears. While most people would have no trouble in grouping cats together as organisms would share a common ancestry, notice the huge difference between the skull of a domestic cat and the skull of a tiger.